Greg visits his local grocery store for his weekly shopping. If he has X $10 bills, Y $20 bills, and Z $5 bills, which of the following expressions represents how much money he has? So this is all about being able to take the given information and construct expressions out of them. And the way we're going to do this is by using the relationship that we have with money and how much each bill represents. So let's go ahead and begin by taking a look at the X $10 bills. So we know that $10 bills are worth $10, right? So we know that however many $10 bills we have, we would multiply it by 10 and that would be the value of it. So for example, if I had three $10 bills, I'd multiply that by 10 and I'd have $30. So intuitively, hopefully that, you know, we're good there because we don't have a specific amount given to us. We're just told that we have not three, but X $10 bills. So we can just take that X and multiply it by 10, giving us, and if we rearrange it, we can write 10 X. And so using that same reasoning, we can go ahead and look into the Y $20 bills. So we know that every $20 bill is worth $20. And we can say that we'll multiply that 20 by however many bills we have of that 20. And that will be the value there. And again, with the $5 bills, we have Z amount of them, you know, not five, 12 or 17 of them, but we have Z. And we just really need to make sure we understand the importance of variables because they just represent numbers. We just don't know what the numbers are. So we'll just add five multiplied by Z because if we have a Z amount of $5 bills, we'll have that value there as well. So 10X plus 20Y plus 5Z will give us the amount of money that Greg has in order to go shopping. A family has just moved into their new home and wants to replace the wooden floor with square tiles that measure two feet by two feet. If the floor space altogether measures to 1200 feet squared, how many tiles should the family purchase? So this problem, uh, there are a couple of misconceptions that might drive you to get the wrong answer. And so I want to address those misconceptions here first. First, uh, the first thing that we want to watch out for is this. This is a common mistake I see. Oh, take the 1200 and divide it by two, and then we get 600. Now that's incorrect, um, largely because we want to pay attention to the concept itself. This problem, it deals with area, and we have a total of 1200 square feet to work with. So let's just go ahead and note that. We have 1200 square feet to work with. And so what you want to think about is you want to divide that 1200 feet squared. So the square feet, you want to divide that by similar units. Notice that the dimensions of the square tile are two feet by two feet. And so if we were to visualize this, let's say we have this entire floor plan. Well, we have 1200 total square feet that we can fit in there. And each tile, the dimensions are two by two. But we need to know how much area is within each tile because we, we want to take the total area and divide it by the area of each tile so that we know how many tiles we can fit in all right so hopefully that makes sense because that's what we're going to do right now what's the area of each tile well two feet by two feet if that's a square two times two that's the area of a square side times side and that's going to give us four and so square feet right there that's the area of each individual tile in order to get how many tiles we can fit in there, well, let's go ahead and take that 1200 and divide it by four. So the total area divided by the area of each tile, and then we'll get how many tiles we can fit in there. 1200 divided by four is 300. And so therefore we can fit 300 tiles and I'm not gonna go ahead and draw it all out, but yeah, we can go ahead and fit 300 tiles in there.